everyone, this is Christopher here with the Time Shifters Podcast. I've got a unique little uh, special episode for you today. I always try to fill in the gaps between the main episodes with something special, a short review, or we'll do a time hop episode. This time I thought I would share something that I did way back in 2010. As longtime listeners know, I used to go to the Denver Star Fest. Former co-host Steve and I would go out there every year, and in the fledgling days of our podcast, before it was Time Shifters, back when we were still involved with the Jonja.net forum, and we were just the Jonja.net podcast, this was probably only the fourth or fifth episode we did a live recording at Denver Starfest. This is like our first panel. Uh, We would go on to do, oh my gosh, I think I did the one that year. I think the next year I did three. (laughs) And I did at least two or three every year after that. That's neither here nor there. Anyway, this panel, as I said, was from 2010. And the entire thing is about the 2009 Star Trek, which is exactly what Tom and I will be talking about in exactly one week. The name of this panel was Trek or Wreck. And it was a really fun discussion. It's about 40, 45 minutes. So it's a little longer than the episodes that usually fall around this time. But I don't know. It was something I thought of as we were gearing up to talk about that film. And I just figured it was time to get it into the feed again. I'm not sure. Yeah, it hasn't seen the light of day since 2010. So I'm kind of excited to share it again. The audio obviously is going to be a little rough because this is recorded live, just open mics in a room. Uh, We had some audience participation and some you can hear better than others. And then, of course, Steve and I are still very new. As we explained at the beginning of this podcast, we're very new at doing the whole hosting thing. We'd never done a panel before. So, yeah, this is a little a little snapshot in my podcasting history, if nothing else. And it's related to 2009 Star Trek. We are seriously time-shifting now. I hope you guys enjoy this look back. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christopher. I am with Johnja.net. My co-host with me today is Steve. How you all doing? Also with Johnja.net. Uh, thank you all for joining us. We are going to record an a, a episode of our uh, fledgling podcast. So you were just in here for a uh, beginning your podcast. We're beginning our podcast. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you, it's... Uh, it's got growing pains, <laughs> but uh, we're having fun doing it, and uh, that's kind of what it's all about, and that's why we're all here. Uh, usually when we start these things, we kind of talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what we've done in our geek, our, our week of geek. Um, for us, it's been pretty much getting ready for this, so we haven't done a whole heck of a lot. Has any, anyone here kind of done anything really cool or see, watched anything new or, or fun that you want to mention? Anybody? Raise hands. Uh, will be the, the raised hand will be the, the cue. Well, for those who missed my panel because of the stupid fire alarm, I'm working on the new edition of the Star Trek Concordance with B. Joe Trimble. Yeah. I should, I should say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else been on anything? Nothing? So let's go out. We can get, we can get right into it then. Um, I wanted to have this discussion. I, I, I'm not here necessarily to, you know, I don't want to, I'm not here to try to change people's minds, whether they like it or don't like it. I'm not expecting anyone to change my mind on my opinions. I'm hoping this discussion, maybe someone will walk away from this and have a little bit more of a, just a different point of view, uh, look at it a little bit more critically, or uh, maybe walk away thinking, my Janja guys are nuts, I can't believe I wasted an hour sitting in their room. So, I'm pretty sure one of those three things will, or, will happen here today. <laughs> my personal view is that I'm going to let Steve give his personal view first. <laughs> Um, I didn't not like the film. Uh, I thought it was pretty decent, but um, just to to jump to the end, when Christopher and I went and saw it, we walked out of the movie saying it wasn't a bad movie. But was this the same movie that everybody has been talking about? It just didn't didn't seem to me uh, to be. <laughs> Um, yes, exactly. Everybody was saying this is amazing, and 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 you know, there was talk of you know awards and everything. It's just like, okay, it was an okay sci-fi film, but 
if it hadn't have been Star Trek, was it that great of a sci-fi film? Which is how I thought. Now, everybody is entitled to their opinion. So, so is there any comments to that right there? First up over here. Hold, wait for me, wait for me. Don't start, don't start, don't start, don't start. I'm doing the Donahue. Uh, for you younger people, Donahue, uh, daytime talk show host kind of started it all. That's, yeah. I think the, the thing that made everybody like that film was that it was the first Star Trek film where everybody in the cast was actually hot. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is that it? Was that the popularity of the film? Is that it just, uh, you know, oh, wait, more. Yeah, good. Because believe me, the less I talk, the better this is going to be. Um, well, I knew the Star I mean, I didn't know the Star Trek. I watched the Star Trek from way back when. And I really, really, really loved... What, what made it really great for me was the different twists. I loved Uhura and Spock. Okay. I loved um, that uh, Kirk, that, um, he grew up differently than what he really did, so that, that gave him a different personality, kind of. Um, I loved what happened with Scotty. And, you know, like, what the heck is he doing way over there with this creature thing, you know? What the heck's going on with that? I mean, so I just love the different, uh, all the different uh, twists that they gave, and it just gave uh, Star Trek a whole, to me, in my mind, a whole new beginning. And I think that was the whole idea. Yeah, that, that's definitely the idea that was, that was kind of put across by Abrams and everyone else. It was kind of the, the relaunch of, a, of a, what they considered an aging series. And with that, I probably would agree it was a little bit of an aging and maybe a little tired yeah see i thought it was more like the movie was was all right but i thought the best part was the fact they didn't make it over the top you didn't every line wasn't exactly like how they would do it in the series i think they kind of made it their own without making it cheesy like oh here they're gonna do this now it's more of like here's a new version here's the same crew we know in a different light different way Let's see what happens. And I think with the second one, it's going to be a lot better because they're more comfortable doing the, the movie. They're going to be, it's going to flow a little better because this is first time out of the gate. He's never done Star Trek. Most of these people have never done Star Trek. They don't know what to do. I think the next movie, they're going to be like, oh, we know what to do now. And it's going to be like, this is a Star Trek movie. Okay, yeah, I guess now would be a good time to, you know, come out and pretty much agree with Steve that when I first saw it in the theater, I, I walked away actually thinking I, I hated it. I couldn't believe that this film was getting all the accolades. Everyone was just going nuts over it. I couldn't believe it. I thought this, this was horrible. Um, and then, of course, everyone that I talked to looked at me like I was crazy. Um, and so I thought, well, you know what? I've got to give it a second viewing. So, so it came to a... But I wasn't going to waste theater money for a second viewing on a film that I came away with hating. So I waited for the DVD. And I watched it, and I, I'm sitting there watching it, and uh, I'll admit that watching it, I thought, that's a good, passable sci-fi film. I do not think it is Star Trek. And I think there is a, and I don't even know if it's something that can necessarily be quantified. I'm going to shut this door here. Can we shut this? This brief recess was brought to you by Miller. Thank you. <laughs> the king of beer. The king of beer. So, I, yeah, where was I? Um, I don't not know. If, Star Trek. Yeah, not Star Trek. And that is something that I don't know. That's certainly something. It's not easy to actually quantify. Um, it falls down. It falls into. There's a spirit of of Star Trek. A, a theme. A feeling um, from watching the Star Treks and the Star Trek films that I did not find in the new movie I thought it was uh, it was just lacking that little it was just more of a did someone say just more of just an action film yeah action adventure you guys anything you told me more took the screen that it was like good old fashioned Star Trek at yeah. the very end scene the very end scene when he was talking to himself he brought it back yeah it was like yeah. I was like oh I got that warm fuzzy yeah but it just I'm not sure if there was enough did you have anything you wanted to add or I, I was more. I was actually pleasantly surprised when I saw it. It was better than I expected it to be because you know it's like, oh my god, is this gonna bomb? You know, you're always afraid of that. And you know, I was happy that I think it will inspire a younger generation to Star Trek. But I agree with you. I didn't. I, I felt it was more action adventure. I did enjoy some of the characters like Bones and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah maybe they'll get back into the spirit of it in the future. Yeah, that is something I want to touch on. We got plenty of time, but I do want to touch about you know what we think might happen with 
the sequel. And, I mean, there's, of course, rumors all over the place, but we'll get to that later. I think part of the big thing that was lacking was intelligence. In the, it was, the science was beyond anything. It makes uh, Spock's brain look like a Nova special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, got to agree with that one. Oh, uh, I did. forget. Uh, you're, you're already mic No, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Run down here. No, I really, the, the, the plot was, I mean, I, I like I said, I, I, I do admire Abrams for trying to bring it back, but boy, they could, they how many the, contrivances can you plant, the, plant, tile onto one star? The thing? script really yeah. could have used a few more workovers, uh, maybe. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I really the, if, if, anyone, if anyone has like really good comments, you know, keep your even even you don't have to wait for us to look for answers. Just you know, raise your hand. He was first, and I'll get right to you. All right. I think a lot of the reason people that are really into Star Trek say it was more of an action film, people that aren't into Star Trek say, oh, it was just like an action film. I love it. It's because it's missing kind of a lot of those contemplative moments that were in next-gen movies and stuff with, like, Picard in the office and kind of the thoughtful scenes. It was, like, one action sequence after another in a lot of parts, and it just didn't have, like, kind of any downtime, you know, which is something Star Trek kind of always doing there. Right, yeah, Star Trek's uh, been, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a talking man sci-fi for sure, or often can anyway. Well, I disagree a little bit because I think it breathed new life into Star Trek because if you look at the last couple of Star Trek movies we had, they were not really good at all because I have them all and I've looked them over again and I bought the new one and I've seen it a couple of times and I think what it has done is it made something new for the new generation, just like I'm, I'm old enough that I'm the old Star Trek, but when the next generation came in, I had to sort of adjust. And I think this is what we have to do now. This is a different time, different actors, and I think it's going to breathe new life into and give Star Trek a new generation of people to start listening to Star Trek, and then they'll go back and maybe get some of the old ones and be able to catch up. I think that's one of the things that Abrams... What his intentions were uh, when he started making this to make this film was that if you were going to be, you know, a Trekkie, you were already a Trekkie. You had already seen the movies. He was trying to bring in another audience. Now, whether or not you have to jettison part of what that means to be Star Trek, I guess that's up for us to judge. But uh, but I think that's part of what he wanted to do was bring in a different audience uh, than what had been going to all of the Star Trek movies since, what, 1980, I guess, 79? Yeah. I think that they probably started backwards. Um, The original series, Next Generation, Voyager, all of them started as TV series, giving you a much longer time frame to get used to the characters and the plots. Right now, with just a movie... You have one plot line, and you got to wait for the next one instead of, on a regular basis, developing the characters. So we're stuck with a character from a movie, which is just not enough for us as, as expecting a, a, uh, a well-developed universe for this new one. And we're not going to have that. Very, very perceptive point. I mean, would we all be sitting here talking about Star Trek today if it had been, you know, a movie every three years back in 1967? Yeah, I mean, I just like to say this isn't necessarily, and I may get accosted for this, this is not necessarily the first rebirth of Star Trek. I mean, they got Harv Bennett and um, Myers, who directed Aratha Khan. They took the whole franchise in a completely completely different direction and really helped kind of help save Star Trek. You know, by the same token, I think this had to happen. This lady brings, brings a very valid point. I'm on the very, very tail end of the people before Next Gen came out. And I got to say, you know, that, um, you know, they we had to do something like this. I mean, there are other shows. I don't want to name names, but I think we all know what I'm talking about when I say they recreated a show. And then um, it, once we took the plunge, most of us were pretty happy. And when I went out there and I saw those commercials, like, this is not your father's Star Trek, you know, I was thinking, man, I, I'm the dad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, I'm the father. This is not, uh, and you know what happened? You know what? You're absolutely right. It was not your father's Star Trek. And you know what? I went, I suspended my disbelief, I had some popcorn, and I had a really great time. Okay. Just to add a comment, I had a really great time in another film that had 
as huge a plot holes but was incredibly panned, which I thought was kind of interesting. I thought of this recently is like, why? how many people here actually like Lost in Space? The movie. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, this is better than I we thought. We got about half the room. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. I thought that was a really fun film. It had horrible, horrible plot, but it was a lot of fun. But critically, panned all get out. You hated it? didn't make any pretense of being tied in, even tangentially, to the original series. It was a reboot from the get go, and they just let this is not the same thing, it's not even close. The original actor's there, but there's cameo as something else. It's just an Easter egg to throw to the fans. Okay. Monkey was equally stupid. Yes. <laughs> just to kind of to kind of touch on what these two gentlemen have said, uh, if you look at when uh, Next Generation first came out, uh, it was good, but it, it actually took a couple seasons for that show to really hit its stride. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you notice huge changes in Picard alone. Mm-hmm. So with just the one movie to base off of, I mean, if they're planning on doing a trilogy, say, I think the next one's going to be a little bit more true to Star Trek form and then the third one will be even more so so there's, it's just kind of a starting point to get you know some of the Star Trek mannerisms in there the characters that you know but also infuse it with a lot more action to get the newer generation in and I'll get your comment but uh, think about this though it, did anyone else feel that their attempts to sort of please the old school audiences with the constant, uh, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, look, dribble, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, green girl, uh, got a little excessive and annoying, though. Yeah. Um, uh, the most contrived part, I thought, was the uh, ice planet with the little creature that ate the big creature that ate the bigger creature oh. chased him down the rabbit hole. Can we like, right. say Phantom Menace? In- yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the ultimate question I have is, one, I really loved the new movie. I really did. I enjoyed it. It was a great ride. The ultimate question I have is, they pushed the envelope on the teleporter. Two people, three people, movement, stellar space. Where have they left to go? Right? They pushed it to where no Star Trek has ever pushed it. They that's pushed that's it what I look forward to. I mean, I look forward to seeing planet. what they do Why with the amount. Starship? What? <laughs> They push to the point where it's like, well, the transport knew that. Why the hell are you building starships? Why not just build... Here's my favorite ship. Is a replicator with a transporter. (laughs) Just think about it. That's badass. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, though, that that was one thing that kind of bothered me about it. The whole thing. Stand really still. I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. Haven't we kind of broken this cannon already with Enterprise, where we saw people get beamed up from a run, from a from a full out run on a couple of occasions? Well, they broke their rule just so. five minutes earlier when the beam in Sulu and the terminal velocity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're already in, you know, and Amanda is already in mid transport beam dematerialized, and suddenly she falls out. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah. You're breaking your own rules. Never mind the original series. <laughs> I just thought that the villain was a little weak. I'd have liked to have seen a way stronger guy that you loved to hate, but you admired the fact that he was a very strong character and demanded the hate or the, you know, there just wasn't, it's like, oh, yeah, he's a bad guy, but there isn't a conflict or a need for a conflict. At that point, the ground, why, why, why should we hate this person? You know, he, he makes an appearance and then apparently sits around for... 50 years, 20 years, 20, 50 years, and just, just sits there and waits, brooding. Yes, you just, you, you get this picture of the outtake with him just sitting there, you know, rubbing his hands together. Hmm, Monday. The, the thing that I really appreciated about the whole thing was when you actually got the DVD of the movie, when you were able to look at the deleted scenes, you saw him break out of a Klingon prison. And to me, that, that created a little bit more of a badass, if you will. You know, someone who would be worthy of being, ooh, this guy's kind of picking on us, what's going on? And they, that, to me, to me, the fact that they cut that scene out took out half of his character development. There's one of the rare instances, I've watched a lot of DVDs, and I've watched the deleted scenes, and for the most part, there's reasons they're deleted. But yeah, this is one case where it was an important little bit of, of character development that got left behind, and you're right, that, that might have benefited, uh, certainly would have benefited in, in this case. Let's slow down the action. We need more lens flares. <laughs> we need more Oh, I'm sorry. She was saying that the, the deleted scene uh, where they show that the... Um, when Nero, Nero was, escaped from a Klingon prison, and it, it gave him a little bit more character development, a little bit more as to where some of his hatred uh, came from. 
Um, I agree with the nice woman over there with the awesome accent. I'm sorry. Uh, but I, I feel it was just made for a different generation. It kind of takes off from where Star Trek ended, and I'm probably going to be flogged and killed for this, but I never did like the original. I, I, I like the characters. I like New Generation, Voyager. Uh, no. Uh, but, yeah, I felt like this kind of... It's taking in to younger audiences who like the action, the adventure, the explosions. I know I do. How old are you? Fifteen. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and it's it's kind of the same thing with when they made out when they came out with the new Star Wars movies. All the people who originally saw it when they were young said, "Oh, this isn't Star Wars. There's too much action. There's too many aliens. What is this?" You know, it's I just. Don't know who'd say that? <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it, it. They were targeting more of a younger audience, and it's just to bring Star Trek to the new generation. So. But is there anything wrong with? I mean, there's nothing wrong with bringing it to a younger, or I'm not even going to go back up there. I'm just getting up in the middle of the floor again. <clears throat> Actually, this would have been a good one to video because this would have been a. You could watch me go back. You could play fast forward with hacky sacks going or something. <laughs> um, is there's nothing wrong with bringing it to a new generation and updating it and including the action? But uh, do you also have to then? Do you have to take away a little bit of everything else that? there there was and again that's more that falls under the you know what do you how do you quantify and it's i'm sitting here trying to make an argument for it and even i can't define what it is but there was something special to the original series certainly something to the next generation here's and a, a lot to the movie here's a, a a rumor that i heard and i don't know if any of us others of you have heard it but i had heard that origin the that original scene in jj J. abrams movie where I guess it, I guess on the screen it ends up being the USS Kelvin uh, encounters the wormhole, gets blown away. I had originally heard that that was going originally going to be the Enterprise as we remembered it. Uh, I hadn't heard that. An early Enterprise captained by April, and it was going to get blown away, and that would be the thing that changed the timeline. Uh, that's, it was kind of like J.J. Abrams blowing away the old timeline. I would have been hunting down J.J. Abrams. <laughs> would you? <laughs> <laughs> My screen name is Captain Robert April on several places. There you go. <laughs> uh, one, thi oh. one thing I... I don't think so. <laughs> one thing I sincerely hope is when I remember watching Star Trek, the original, with my stepfather when I was young, and I was talking 12 to 15 years old, um, I remember the impact of Let This Be Your Last Battlefield. Mm. And the moral uh, societal questions Gene Roddenberry put in his films, along with Next Generation, had just pure sci-fi, which they were fun to. Um, but I just hope that's not lost in, in the next generation of Star Trek fans, because I feel it, it touched me as a, as a youth. And I think they need to address their issues in Star Trek behind it. As they like overpopulation, the the fishing the oceans out, they could use so much to speak to the younger generation through Star Trek, like Gene Ronberry did in the original. That might be a phrase that I've been kind of trying to avoid using because I think it's the phrase that's often used most with Star Trek, and perhaps to the point of being you know no one wants to hear it anymore is the social commentary. Uh, the um, there was another phrase too, and I can't remember it because. But anyway, the point is that you know. Star Trek was, and uh, again, this this almost sounds derogatory to the Star Wars fans, really, but Star Wars Trek was always, you know, it's been called the thinking man sci-fi versus just the action sci-fi. It's not the, just the Flash Gordon. And so there's always the social commentary. And uh, we'd be hard-pressed to find the social commentary in the newer film, in my opinion. Let's quantify that, too. <laughs> well, that's why I was just actually going to say that the both of you said so eloquently that I... <laughs> I was that just was watching. <laughs> I was watching uh, Next Generation. We've been watching it since it's been on, and I remember watching it in high school. And you know, there was so much that I missed back then. That now watching it, it's like, wow! I can't believe how much she was really talking about, you know, gender rights and just all kinds of things, genocide, things like that. And that's what I think this movie was missing was some what was the deeper issue of our time that's not happening so. 
Yeah, during that green, well, let, me, let, me get, let me get across over there to you because I'm afraid you're not going to get picked up. Oh, we need two people with mics, two Donahues. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, kind of, I kind of pick up on that because, like, during that, like, you know, that sex scene with like the green chick, it's like if she really was like, if that was part of her culture, like, um, like uh, you know, Betazoids having you know naked weddings and stuff that was handled so well in Next Generation. Like, it was just like matter of fact, this is part of our culture. Deal with it. But like in this one, like she was always like hiding from Ahura, like, I don't have a man in here. Well, you know, if, if she's like, if that's her planet and she's like this libido and it's like part of her culture, then why is it treated like such like a, you know, like almost like a Puritan directed it or something? Like, like, Get out of here, Kurt, quick. It got Pine in his underwear. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it boils down to. Let's go back up front here real quick. I mean, I think that what they did with the new movie is that they took everything that we know about Star Trek, especially with the intellectualizing of it and the uh, higher society that was the Gene Roddenberry universe, and already kind of used that as a given. It was already a given that he, Earth had already solved all these problems. And I think that where that came up with, especially when we come to sexism and stuff, like Uhura was just a world-class, very powerful character. I really liked what they did with the character. Uh, multiple language, what dialects, this and that. You know, and also, they kept saying, making references to it being a humanitarian and peacekeeping force, and they stuck to that. Even in the end, it's like, oh, cool, here's the part where we blow up the bad guy's ship. It was like a, wait a second, why don't we offer him assistance, you know? And Spock did what he did. But anyway, I just want to put it out there. They did take the time to pause to actually represent the things that had been brought up in the original show, I think. That may be true to a point, but I, I, I think that towards the end, especially with the Spock pretty much going, no, I don't think so. Blow, you know, send a four to to torpedo up. Yeah, it was like that. I, Sorry. That's all right. That that, that it bothered me it, because like that that just further pulled it away for me from uh, uh, original track. Who else had their hand up? Oh, right here. I'm sorry. Here you go. Now, I believe that despite all of the warts and all of the c complaints that the people have, that audiences have made about the new Trek movie, I think that the most effective thing that J.J. Abrams did was translating um, the language of a television program um, into a film. Keep in mind that Star Trek The Motion Picture and all of the movies that, um, that follow it all the way to Nemesis were written by TV people who were, um, who were trying to do that um, as as they can with character development, um, more, uh, more slow, um, and, a, and a more slower sp pace for a very specific audience. J.J. Abrams knew that the only way in which he needed to infuse um, new energy into the franchise was by translating um, everything that came before into a very and into a very into a very energetic and very kin um, kinetic production, and that's what happened. It brought in a new audience and. You know, JJ, J, 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 Roberto, Alex, they just need to, um, to find a time to discover the real things that, um, you know, that, that matter in, um, in Star Trek. And, but that's going to happen, um, in future movies. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's actually, that's a very good, that's a very good point. It's, and, and that probably helps, that probably affects my view of the film, too, as I have so much, some would call baggage of what Star Trek, where I didn't need uh, a lot of development in the movie, and where this one had to package, like you said, package everything into a very small, uh, and where before you didn't have to. So that is a good point. Uh, and I'm thinking in a little bit here, we got a couple more hands raised, and then we'll we'll get into. I want the series. I want a series all the time. I don't just want a movie. I want to have the series. I've been getting it since the very first the original series. I've been watching it for all these years. Not having it, I'm getting withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I, I, I'd agree. I, I remember seeing this film and then seeing it the second time and thinking, okay, but you know, this will be an interesting uh, case if it, if this movie kind of does the reversal and becomes a series rather you know than the series becoming movies. Well, I've been a Trek fanatic since it first started in 1966, and I thoroughly enjoyed the new movie, and I'm with the young man. If he's 15 years old, and if it gets him into it, let's do it, because I want it to live forever. I'm with this guy back here with, I need an episode, I need movies. <laughs> so if this is what it is, and what it, t I think that it was better than I expected. And I'm seriously crazy classic Star Trek person. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I will agree. I mean, I have... I am pleased and all get out that this will continue the Star Trek, you know, phenomena. Um, 
we'll see how long it lasts, how long it carries it. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that it's going to keep going because, it, like you, uh, I grew up watching the original. My dad, you know, I mean, I've been Star Trek fans probably since in vitro. You know, I probably heard it in the womb and then uh, and grew up with it and loved, loved and hated, you know, depending on which episode or which movie, agreed, you know. So the fact that it's going, it, bring, it does bring in new audiences. Uh, there was an argument, or not an argument, but a statement where someone said that, you know, will, it, will anyone watch the old stuff? Maybe. Maybe they will. Maybe fans that see this film will say, well, what did it start? You know, where did it all come from? And, you know, <coughs> you all right? Oh, yep. I thought it was you. <laughs> You've been quiet, so I wanted to make sure you're still alive. <laughs> To confirm what you said just then, I had a small interest in Star Trek before the movie came out, mm -hmm. with my dad and everything of how he was involved in it before. But after the movie came out, if you are noticed that they have all the original series episodes on YouTube, mm -hmm. I've been watching those for months now. And yeah. yeah, that's great. There you go. Thank you. That's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> If I can piggyback on what my son's saying, uh, I think it's really good that we get to spend that time together watching Trek again. So even if it uh, is a bit warped and getting on its feet and getting going, I saw some goodness in there. I saw uh, the actor that played Bones in one scene establish that role really well. Uh, there's some glean gleaming hope in there. There's some areas. You know, I, I look at it and I hear what you're saying. I think we've got a... Uh, very much video game generation going so I think they're doing what it takes because it's not just social issues into Star Trek Star Trek is part of our society and one of the key areas that's in our society is space and the military people that do good things for our country and they come out of this generation and if they can get inspired if they can if they can see these dreams of the future of space of of what it is to be patriotic and think about good things that humanity can do hey I don't care how it's packaged well said. I like That's it. good. Yeah, there was a. Uh, uh, did, did anyone see uh, get the DVD of the motion picture with the uh, the special edition with the commentary by uh, Michael Okuda, the text commentary? Has anyone seen that? The director's edition. Yes, thank you. Uh, at the very end, pretty much as the credits are rolling, he makes a statement that NBC always considered Star Trek a failed series. <laughs> and at the time, he's like, you know, with, uh, let's say at the time there was, what, four or five, five series, uh, like nine movies that inspired astronauts, scientists, and doctors. Our technology, this cell phone would not exist if it had not been for Star Trek. The inventor of the cell phone <laughs> saw Star Trek and went, we could do that. <laughs> you know, um, and then his final comment was, not bad for a failed series. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think, um, do we have, I, we've got a few more hands up, but I know we're kind of, we're coming up. I wanted to hit a little bit on what we kind of maybe have hope for uh, in, the, in this coming, you know, in the sequel that we know is going to happen, and hopefully the sequel to that, and then the series, the, the next, the fourth movie. Steve, do you have any uh, comments uh, before we move on? Well, I was, a uh, gentleman back here brought up uh, uh, the actor playing McCoy and how well he sold that part. What did you guys think of the casting about this, of this movie? I liked it. Did, did, did it work? Actually, I'm kind of with Robert Meyer Burnett on the casting of Zach Quinno as Spock. I cannot exactly repeat his words, but... Let's just say he played Spock as whiny and emo. <laughs> all right, all right. And you know, someone else commented uh, the what they had done with the Uhura character, as far as giving her so much of the, the the dialects and gave her made her a little bit stronger of a personality. Except she was also an officer that con left her post like three times <laughs> during the film. <laughs> yeah. Blackmail her to get on the Enterprise. Yeah. Strong woman, maybe not as good an officer. So. <laughs> I think the casting was really well done as far as it's not trying to be exact. Because if they did it exact, people would go, this is cheesy, they're just being exact. I think the casting is really well done. And as far as Spock, I just like the fact that when they were doing the Comic-Con and they were introducing them all, off stage, um, Leonard Nimoy's wife takes a look at Zachary Quinto and kind of tears up because the guy reminds you, reminds you of Spock. Whether he did a good job acting-wise, you look at him and you say, oh, this is Spock. Yeah, he does, he does have kind of like an eerie, you know, young Nimoy quality about him. You can't deny it. Um, 
I'd say that they they really hit spot on with more of the more of the supplementing characters. Uh, I thought Bones was impeccable. The guy that played Chekhov really channeled some some things in that character that you hadn't seen before and gave them more room to grow. Whereas with your primary characters, they kind of I mean, they're your primary characters, so there's not so much room for them to grow, in my personal opinion. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, one big character of any Star Trek, Enterprise. I mean, Enterprise has become essentially a character. So what did we think of Enterprise, the look of Enterprise? We got definitely a dissenter over here. What did it look like? Yeah. I think it was shiny. It was shiny, yeah. It was the size of the original, and... I think because it was J.J. Abrams, I think it worked. I think if we made it look like the original series, it wouldn't work because it's a new audience. They're going to want to see something flashy, something big, bold, going out there. I think if you had done cheesy, you know, if they had tried to do cheesy and make it look like the original series, people, the young people would be like, this, this is no good. But now that they made it so hip looking that the young people are going to get into it and then springboard and look at the other stuff and look at the other movies and kind of a launching pad. It had to be shiny because Abrams, as we all know, loves his lens flares. Yes. The, uh, the you know, bridge you know, looked uh, like an Apple store obsession with lens flare. <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome. <laughs> I'll come right back to you as I got your hands up. You're fine. I want to introduce John Jackson right here. Hello. He, 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 among other things, among also being a there's a trip cord over here. <laughs> it was my plan. <laughs> He's the, the third part in Janja.net. We couldn't do it without him. He's also a big help here at Starland. So a lot of the, you know, uh, the, the, what you see that goes on and everything is thanks to him. So, John, do you have any comments? So it's a little applause. Do you have any comments or anything to what you've heard so far? <clears throat> Well, you know, I, I like the, uh, the the outside look of the ship. I li- it grew on me. I ended up liking it, especially in some of the shots they had it in. But like I said, the inside of the bridge looked like an Apple Store threw up, and I just <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was more of a hair salon. And, and they really got to get it. Give me a set for engineering. What about the engine brewery. room, guys? Yeah, I, <laughs> seriously. I was about to um to get to that. The entire aesthetic of Enterprise was absolutely. Retro, retro modern. The only complaint that I have is that they have to shoot engineering in a brewery. A freaking brewery. <laughs> that takes Scotty's, you know, uh, you know possible uh, de- dealing with alcoholism to a whole new level, doesn't it? <laughs> That's what I was going to comment is, is you can't separate the Enterprise from Scotty. Yeah. And I'm not so sure that about this Scotty. This, yeah. it's, he's the big question mark for me in, in all of the characters. If he's believable or not, yeah, since when I just was Scotty don't know. comic relief. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's not. He, he has been. So sure. he has been that comic relief before. Scene, They're covered <laughs> in the Enterprise when he's invaded by zombies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we hope for? Surface you'll find will be destroyed. Oh yeah, real funny. So what are we what are we hoping for for a sequel? I mean, there's lots of rumors. They, no, no con, no con, no con. I, I think that is going to be end up being sort of like this red herring to keep dangling out. Is to that op- true? Hmm? Is that true? No, I, I, it's, it's something that keeps getting mentioned. I think it's going to keep getting mentioned to just try to keep people occupied. You know, I always way. thought about Star Trek: The Academy Years was just a red herring, and they did it. They so don't yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> put it past them. So well, let, let, the let's out. just uh, let's just. I'm hoping they do something completely different. If they're going to do anything at all, I'd rather them not draw on the original series. If this is really going to be the new Star Trek, new then stories. do, some, then new do story, something, something, do new, new stories. Um, if they were going to do... do we, what, we, that that lady was raising her hand over there. Oh, I'm sorry. But uh, if they were going to do, if they were going to pull from the original series, what episode would you like to see redone? Well, you know, I was I was thinking about that, how they could do that, because um, being that now the time continuum's all screwed up, you know, all messed up, I was trying to figure out which one could they draw from, from and I could think of like five or six of them, but I don't know. I mean, it just all depends on how they can make the characters fit into the old stuff. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. It'll be interesting. 
go back to uh, City on the Edge of Forever, jump through and put it all back right. <laughs> Doomsday um, Machine. They can't ever use the original series stuff on this because it's not the same characters. The character is different. The look and the feel is different. If they try to do one of those old stories, it won't work. Unfortunately, they're going to have to go fresh, do something new, and introduce a, a bad guy that maybe they don't catch at the end, and we wait and see what happens in the third film with them. Maybe they get something to dangle us to keep us going. That's true, but uh, also uh, keep in mind that just because our, you know, the Federation and, uh, that we've known, the Enterprise and the crew are different, some of the situations that they encountered in the original season are still going to happen. There's the, still the planets that they come across for the first time and whatever. Klingons and Romulans? Klingons and Romulans? Uh, yeah, or the modern Romulans, whichever they might be. Any other suggestions? We got, oh, come with hands. Here we go. Got to look around. If they do it right, I'd like to see Harry Mudd. Yep. <laughs> That's not bad. I don't know that I want to see a whole movie with Harry Mudd, though. But uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which one? Mudd's women or I Mudd? Oh. <laughs> Combine them. There you go. Make him, make, him, make him a badass. Yeah. You know? No more cream puff mud. Let's get some <laughs> good, 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 good <laughs> mud going. I'm hardcore. Freddy takes mud. Yeah. <laughs> Space pirate. Does anyone else have any comments or <coughs> suggestions? Right here? Oh, sorry. Something I'm just anxious to see is what they end up doing with the, uh, the Vulcan culture now that the planet is yeah. not there anymore. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm anxious to see how they try and rebuild that, that entire culture. There'll be something curious to see whether they even address, honestly. Uh, or if they're just going to go, yeah, you know, Nimoy getting is like, oh, you know, we're not many of us, so we're here, and we have to rebuild, and then that is that where it drops. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, sure I would hope not. No. I'm sure you'll see it in uh, expanded universe type books and stuff. It'll, they'll dive Assuming deep they let into them it. publish them, they've canceled before they were supposed to. They, were they did. I, hmm. They will, though. It's a cash cow. They'll do it. Yeah, I was actually hoping I mentioned I was hoping to try to get in some special guests. I was trying to get in Kevin, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Warden, uh, Dayton, me, War, Kevin Dayton Warden, Kevin Dilmore, uh, both prolific uh, Star Trek authors, but uh, unfortunately they're judging the costume contest, which is going on right now. So our our, our conflict. The best thing you figure is the studio pulled the plug on because they want to keep a real tight grip on how the story goes. The problem is that they don't quite understand. Publishers don't work that fast. So these things were announced, they had paid for, they were on the verge of coming out. It's like a month away from release. And suddenly, oh, you can't do it. Hey! <laughs> now maybe, we gotta fill this slot, you morons! What are you doing to us? <laughs> well, maybe after the, uh, the, the second, the sequel, maybe they'll loosen up a little bit and start letting the authors do their thing and build on the universe. Maybe that's just it. Maybe right now Paramount feels, well, there isn't enough of a universe. We don't want to be, you know, tied into. We don't want to listen to people's arguments over, yeah, but in this book, uh, you know. So, yeah. Did you have another comment? Well, also with the destruction of Vulcan and all, it might be interesting if they eventually showed how Spock will deal with a mock time and everything, since he won't be able to return back to Vulcan for his uh, ceremony. Oh, very good. Pond Far still going to happen. That's true. Vulcan Vega. I like your son. You've raised him right. I hope to do as well. <laughs> well, we are getting close. We've got about 12 minutes. Yeah, a little less. We want to be able to cut down and break down before the next uh, group come in. I think that's about it. I encourage you. I hope you guys have had a fun time at Starfest. Um, it's not over yet. There's still a little, you know, tomorrow morning, a little bit tonight. Federation Bowl is going to kick off here soon. Um, I hope you all have a really great time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being so active. And good night. Mm-hmm.